Ahoy, Von de Crew. As I'm uh, finishing up this three-year sailboat restoration, I'm getting ready to install my final through hole, and I wanted to walk you all through the process in case you were curious how I do it. So this is going to be how I install a through hole. Here are the supplies I'm using. Of course, I've got my through hole and my seacock. This is a one and a half inch Groco seacock through hole. I've got a backing plate kit that has the little backing plate nuts. I've got some bolts. I believe these are 5 16 <clears throat> You're also gonna need some epoxy. I'm using West Systems. So I'm gonna be using West Systems epoxy as well as West Systems 404 high density filler. And then, you know, some gloves, a mixing stick and a little cup and then a sander to prep the area. This is the through hole we're going to be installing. So essentially I'm gonna put the backing plate here to measure the area and then highlight it and then prep the area with the sander. Once I prep the area, then I will be able to stick the backing plate to it. This is gonna be a two day process. So day one, we're going to do the uh, the backing plate and then day two we'll come back and finish the through hole installation. I didn't have it over here, but I should also mention that you're gonna need some, some sealant. You're gonna need to cut this in order to maintain a flush surface. So this is how I test fit the backing plate with the hull. I put the through hole through the backing plate and then I put it in here. And I make sure it all fits and then I draw my line so the area in between the line and the through hole is where I'm going to sand to prep the surface all right so I've sanded and prepped the surface about as much as I think I need to all right so you'll notice our backing block here has six holes and our seacock has three holes so this is a bb2 backing block it fits one and a quarter and one and a half inch through holes. So we have two separate through hole sizes we can use. So we're gonna take our through hole and line it up. And I'm assuming it's the larger holes on the outside. So, yep. So those are gonna be the holes we use. So to use those holes, we've got these nuts right here and we're gonna hammer these in. So yeah, essentially you want these to be flush with the surface. So this will be the front side, this will be the back side. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some tape, some painter's tape on these hexes just to prevent any epoxy from getting inside the threads. So when I place it on, no epoxy gets in here because that'll prevent us from screwing the through hole in. Okay. And our backing block is all prepped. <clears throat> I'm also, when I set this with the putty, I'm gonna set it using the through hole so that I know it sets correctly. So I'm gonna wrap some tape around the through hole also. Yeah, I don't want this to get epoxied in there. So essentially now, I'm gonna create my putty mixture. I'm gonna apply it to the back side of this. I'm gonna go like this. We've got this, and I'm gonna glue this to the hull. Also keep in mind when you're installing this, the orientation of the screw holes when you install it. So as you can see, like depending on how you want your handle to face, so I want my handle to be like this, up and down. So I'm gonna need to install it so that these two holes are like parallel with the mast or you know standing straight up that way when i install my through hole it's like this and stands straight up that way i can reach the lever the way i want to and these levers you can swap the orientation so i can either go like this or go like this 
but I'm gonna leave mine like this. I guess I could do like this, but I prefer, I'm gonna prefer doing it like that. Okay, so that's looking good. Now I'm gonna apply this to the back of our backing plate as well as to the surface on the hull. Okay, so that's it on the backing plate and I'm gonna go apply some on the hull. All right, so there it is on the hull. All right, and there it is. And as you can see, we've got epoxy coming out the sides when I press it on. That's how you know we used enough epoxy if epoxy starts coming out the side. So I'm gonna go around and clean this up. That's our backing plate installation. And we'll be back tomorrow to install the through hole in the seacock. I'm gonna leave the through hole in there like that while this all hardens. That way the backing plate doesn't slide out of place. What's up, Vanda Crew? We are back with our through hole installation. So it's the next day and let's go ahead and take a look at our through hole. Everything should be bonded correctly. So here is our backing plate and you can see I've already mounted the seacock to it. It's just a test fit. This is our through hole. I took this out and I test fit this so it's not actually on there all the way. But you can see how the bolts hold it in. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna test fit this and see how much we need to trim off. So I'm gonna go on the outside of the boat and I'm gonna screw this into the seacock until I can't screw it in no more and mark off how many threads remain and then we'll know how much to cut off with the cutoff wheel. Here's our through hole from the outside of the boat. You can see our epoxy smushed up against the through hole and created almost a perfect, filled in all the gaps and created a per perfect barrier for us to seal the through hole to. That's why we used the tape. The tape kept the tape kept the epoxy from bonding onto the through hole. If we hadn't used tape, I would have never been able to get this out at all. So let's try and test fit this now and see how far we can screw it in. Okay. I don't know how well you can see it on the phone, but you can see that the through hole is all the way up against that ball bearing where the uh, valve is. So this is as far as it can go. So now I'm gonna make a note of how many threads I need to cut off. So let's take a look here at our through hole. We got one, two, three, seven, twelve threads to remove. So let's come up here. One, two, ten, eleven, twelve. So I'm gonna cut along this red, this uh, black line. All right, let's go test fit our new through hole. All right, now let's get some sealant and close this thing off for good. I'm also gonna be using one of these. This is for tightening through holes. So you can see the grooves lock into the through hole and then you sit on the outside and you can rotate this to tighten it. It just gives you a better grip. All right, so we got our sealant. I'm using 3M5200 Marine Adhesive. Uh, it's not ideal. I would rather be using 4200, but <clears throat> I had a case of the, or a tube of this lying around and this stuff is pretty expensive. I also had some 4000 UV, but I've got some deck hardware and mast hardware I'm gonna install later and I'd rather save my UV sealant for that. All right, so here's our backing plate with the seacock off. So this is after the installation, it's really solid. This is our seacock, we're gonna apply sealant just around this little edge right here. Um, it's very important to Make sure you don't get sealant on the ball valve in here. You will ruin your seacock valve if you get sea, uh, sealant in here. Okay, that's what it looks like after application. When I bolt this down, it's gonna get really tight and squeeze it out a lot. So, you know, a little goes a long way, but we just wanna get it around that lip seal to create a seal. So now I'm gonna bolt this down. 
Okay, our seacock is bolted down nice and tight. Now let's install our through hole. All right, so here's our seacock from the outside. You can see our sealant kind of seeping in. That's good. So now we're gonna apply sealant on the inside of here and sealant on the threads of our through hole as well as around the through hole exit while still making sure we don't get any sealant on the ball valve. All right, let's do it. And that came out perfect. This is exactly what we want some of the sealant to squeeze out as you tighten it down. It's in all the way. You can see none of the sealant made it to the ball valve. So we're also good on that front. So a little got inside the valve just from, just because of this. Had a little sealant on there. But being inside the valve isn't gonna actually mess up the valve itself. I can clean that out pretty easily. All right, I'm gonna clean this up now with some paper towels and yeah, we'll call it a day. <laughs>